continuing on from where we left off, <coughs> the last thing that we did was bases and dimension. Uh, these are, I'm just going over them again because there's been a long break since our last class. So let's look at these definitions again for a bit so we have a recap for the next section. So the basis, a set of vectors we want to Vn forms a basis for a vector space if you have these two conditions. The first condition is that all of these vectors should be linearly independent and all of these vectors should span V. Recall that if a set of vectors spans V, it means that any vector in this space, in this vector space V, take any vector, then you can write it as a linear combination of these vectors. So the idea is you have n linearly independent vectors which can represent any, a linear combination of them can represent any vector in this vector space. As an example, we know that E1, E2, E3 are a <coughs> basis for R3 in that these are linearly independent and any set of vectors can also, any set of vector can be written, any vector in R3 can be written in terms of E1, E2 and E3. Of course, another thing to note is that basis, another thing to recall rather, is that basis vectors are not unique. That means you can have another set of basis vectors. For example, this is another basis for R3, this is another basis for R3, and this is another basis for R3. Note, however, that even this basis has three vectors, this basis has three vectors, and this basis has three vectors, which is an important thing that will come up later because a basis is closely related to the dimension of the space that you're working in. And we'll look at these ideas in a bit. If you have R2 by 2, that is a space of matrices, of 2 by 2 matrices, then these four matrices can be used to form a basis for this R2 by 2 space. Where you have one in this space for the first basis, one in this uh, position for the second basis vector, one in this position, and one in this position. So when you take a linear combination of them, this first matrix can be used to change the, va the first value, this can be used to change the second value. So if you have any vector, let's suppose you have a vector 1, 2, 3, 4, you can use this to represent the 1, use this to change this to 2, to 3, and to 4 and you will have a 2 by 2 matrix of 1, 2, 3, and 4. So C1 can be 1, C2 can be 2, C3 can be 3, and C4 can be 4. Um, this, by the way, uh, is an example. They're verifying that these four matrices are linearly independent. And the way to show that a set of vectors is linearly independent is that you show that a linear combination of them can be zero if and only if all of these C1, C2, C3, C4 are zero. So if I make this equation and I equate it to the zero vector in this space, the zero vector in this space is obviously going to be this zero, 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 zero matrix. And so you get this vector. All right. Okay, so these four vectors are a basis for the space. Moving on, we looked at a theorem. This theorem states that if you have n vectors which are a spanning set for a vector space V, then if you take any collection of vectors which have n vectors where n is greater than n, that is you take another set of vectors which has more vectors than this collection, then that collection will definitely be linearly dependent. And we did this in class, and you can go through the proof if you want. I won't go through the, this again. Another corollary that comes directly from the above theorem is that if this collection and this collection, if both of these collections are a basis for a vector space, then n has to be equal to n. That is the number of vectors in this collection has to be equal to the number of vectors in this collection if both of them are bases for a vector space. So the idea is a collection can be a base. The number of vectors in a basis is always the same, but those vectors can be different. For example, you had three vectors here. This was a basis, 
you had three different vectors here that was a basis and the three different vectors here which was a basis but all of these have to have the same number of vectors in this case it was n equals to 3 coming back we define the idea of a dimension a vector space has dimension n if its basis contains n vectors so for example r3 had dimension 3 r2 by 2 had dimension 4 because we had four vectors in the basis the subspace 0 of v is said to have dimension 0 this is a convention that we take which contain which is just the trivial subspace as we discussed and v is said to be finite dimensional if there is a finite set of vectors that spans v so if you can span v in a set of finite vectors then that's finite dimensional otherwise it's infinite dimensional okay here is another example that tells us that this vector space of all polynomials is infinite dimensional you can read this on your own okay another theorem if v is a vector space of dimension n greater than zero then any set of n linearly independent vectors spans phi that is if the dimension is n then if you can find any set of n linearly independent vectors v1 to vn u1 to un x1 to xn as long as they are linearly independent you can use those vectors to span v which means take any vector in this space and you can write it as a linear combination of these n linearly independent vectors and second part which is quite related to the first part that any n vectors that span v are linearly independent that if you have a set of n vectors which you can use to span the space then they also must be linearly independent these are some examples that I'm skipping over I'm just interested in the theorems right now you can look at the examples of course on your own if V is a vector space of dimension n greater than 0 then no set of fewer than n vectors can span V if the dimension is n then if you have less than n vectors you will be unable to span V that is you will be unable to express every vector in terms of these less than n vectors if you have n linearly independent vectors you're fine but if you don't have n vectors if you have n minus 1 n minus 2 then you won't be able to span the whole of space v any subset of fewer than n linearly independent vectors can be extended to form a basis which means if you have fewer than n vectors but they're linearly independent you can add a few more vectors and make it a basis and any spanning set containing more than n vectors can be pared down to form a basis which means if you have a spanning set which has more than n vectors you can get rid of a few of them and make it into a basis that means remove some vectors you have n vectors remaining and those n vectors will be a basis but you have to be careful in choosing which vectors you can remove you can't just remove if you have eight vectors and you want those eight vectors span your space let's say r3 and you want only three of them you can't just randomly remove five of those vectors you have to be careful in choosing three of them such that those three are linearly independent with each other that that collection is linearly independent and this idea of standard basis is quite easy that is e1 e2 e3 are called standard bases because they are very convenient to write they just contain a one in one position and the rest are zeros similarly our n can be made by e1 e2 up until en similarly r2 by 2 has standard bases that we just saw where each matrix contains just a one in a single position and the rest of the positions are zero and that's section 3.4